Assalamualaikum and good day. This video will introduce you to a linear programming problem and how to formulate an LP model. A linear programming is an optimization technique for a system of linear constraints and a linear objective function. Linear programming is useful for many problems that require an optimization of resources. It could be applied to manufacturing, to calculate how to assign labor and machinery to minimize cost of operations. It also helps to decide which products to sell and in what quantity in order to maximize profit. The objective of an LP problem is to maximize or minimize some quantity. An objective function defines the quantity to be optimized. For example, to maximize profit or to minimize cost. And the goal of linear programming is to find the values of the variables that maximize or minimize the objective function. All LP problems have constraints that limit the degree to which the objective can be pursued. If both the objective function and the constraints are linear, the problem is referred to as a linear programming problem. Linear functions are functions in which each variable appears in a separate term raised to the first power and is multiplied by a constant, which could be zero. This function is a linear function because both variables are in different terms. While this function is not a linear because the power of x is 2. This is a quadratic function. This equation is not a linear function because there exist two variables in a single term. Linear constraints are linear functions that are restricted to be less than or equal to greater than or equal to or equal to a constant. A graphical solution method can be used to solve a linear program with two variables. A constraint is an inequality that defines how the values of the variables in a problem are limited. In order for linear programming techniques to work, all constraints should be linear inequalities. The feasible or possible solution of the LP problem only satisfies all the problem's constraints. Therefore, we need to find the best solution of the problem. The optimal solution or the best solution of the problem is a feasible solution that results in the largest possible objective function value when maximizing or giving smallest objective value when minimizing. These are the guidelines for model formulation. First, you need to understand the problem thoroughly. Then, Define the decision variables. Next, write the objective functions and the constraints. These functions need to be written in terms of decision variables. And finally, identify any upper or lower bounds on the decision variables. This is the general form of an LP problems. The first line is the objective function, either maximize or minimize z. We can see here x1, x2 until xn represent decision variables, subject to a group of constraints. The number of constraints depends on the problem. The constraint can be either an equation or inequality. 
the last line is the boundary of every decision variable. Now let's discuss example 2.1. In the wood, Sindri and Bahad manufactures two types of wooden toys, trucks and cars. A truck sells for 27 ringgit and uses 10 ringgit worth of raw materials. Each truck that is manufactured increases Kinderwood's variable labor and overhead costs by 14 ringgit. A car sells for 21 ringgit and uses 9 ringgit worth of raw materials. Each car built increases Kinderwood's labor, variable labor and overhead costs by 10 ringgit. The manufacture of wooden trucks and cars requires two types of skilled labor, carpentry and painting. A truck requires two hours of painting labor and one hour of carpentry labor. A car requires one hour of painting and one hour of carpentry labor. Each week, Kinderwood can obtain all the needed raw material but only 100 painting hours and 80 carpentry hours. The demands for cars is unlimited but at most 40 trucks are bought each week. Kinderwoods want to maximize weekly profit. Formulate a mathematical model of Kinderwoods situation that can be used to maximize Kinderwoods weekly profit. To formulate the model, we need to define the decision variables. In this problem, Kinderwood wants to maximize its weekly profit, and the profit comes from the wooden trucks and wooden car. Therefore, Kinderwood must decide how many trucks and cars should be manufactured each week. Here, two decision variables involved in this problem, which is x1 represent the number of trucks produced each week and x2 represents the number of cars produced each week. Before we go to the next step, we need to extract the information from the problem. Write all information from points in a table so that it is easy for us to construct the objective function and constraints. We have two columns, x1 and x2. Let's read the problem sentence by sentence. A truck sells for 27 ringgit and uses 10 ringgit worth of raw material. 27 ringgit is the price for of the wooden of a unit of wooden truck and 10 ringgit is the cost of raw material so we have to we have a row for price and write 27 ringgit under x1 we also have a row for raw materials and write 10 ringgit in column x1 now from the next sentence, we know that the labor and overhead cost to produce a unit of wooden truck is 14 ringgit. So we have a row for other costs. And we write 14 ringgit in this cell. Next. Each car sells for 21 ringgit, use 9 ringgit of raw materials, and variable labor and overhead cost by 10 ringgit. We fill in this information in column X2. The manufacturing of these toys involves carpentry and painting process. Two hours of painting and one hour of carpentry are needed to produce a unit of truck. While a car requires one hour of painting and one hour of carpentry level.
for x now we have two new rows painting and carpentry two hours under x1 and one hour here for carpentry for x2 we have one hour painting and one hour carpentry from this sentence there is no limit for raw material but only 100 painting hours and 80 carpentry hours available each week in column limit we know that Kinderwood can use not more than 100 hours of painting and maximum 80 hours of carpentry works. Finally, demand for cars is limit, unlimited but at most 40 trucks are bought each week. This sentence tells us that Kinderwood can produce wooden cars as many as they want but they can't produce more than 40 trucks every week. We write this information here. Using this table, we can proceed to the next step which is constructing the objective function. The objective of this problem is to maximize Kinderwood weekly profit. And the profit is equal to weekly revenues minus weekly costs. Let's refer to the table. The weekly revenues or weekly income is 27 ringgit times the number of wooden trucks produced per week plus 21 ringgit times the number of wooden cars produced each week. Thus, weekly revenues is 27x1 plus 21x2. The weekly cost come from the cost of raw materials, labor and overhead costs. We gain the information from these two rows. Weekly raw material cost is 10 x1 plus 9 x2 and weekly labor and overhead cost is 14 x1 plus 10 x2 therefore weekly production cost is 24x1 plus 19x2 Now, we substitute both equations into the formula to get Kinderwood's weekly profit. Which is, the weekly profit is equal to 3x1 plus 2x2. This is the objective function of Kinderwood's LP model. Now, let's move to the next step, which is constructing function of the constraint. Values of x1 and x2 are limited by the following three restrictions. The first constraint is the printing hours. 
each week, Kinderwood cannot use more than 100 hours of painting time. Therefore, the function of this constraint is 2x1 plus 1x2 less than or equal to 100. The second constraint is each week not more than 80 hours of carpentry time may be used. Thus, the function is x1 plus x2 less than 80, less than or equal to 80. The third constraint is the limitation of the wooden truck's production. At most, 40 trucks should be produced each week. Means, X1 is less than or equal to 40. Finally, we combine all the functions into one complete model. For the Kinderwood's problem, the model is Maximize Z equals to 3x1 plus 2x2 subject to 2x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 100 x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 80 and x1 less than or equal to 40 and the last line is very important because we need to set the boundary of every decision variables. This is the complete LP model for Kinderwood problem. That's all for now. I will show how to solve two variables LP problem in the next video. Thank you.